while Pai Patel might have spent 227 days trapped on a lifeboat with a Bengal tiger, executive Elizabeth Gabler and producer Gil Netter spent 11 years bringing the impossible story from page to screen. Life of Pi was published on September 11, 2001, perhaps the worst day to have a book launch. Nevertheless, it sold over 10 million copies and won author Jan Martel the prestigious Man Booker Prize. Yet it was deemed an impossible movie to make and the 11 years in between publishing and the release of the movie directed by Ang Lee is a story about the complexity of adaptation. Life of Pi is arguably my favorite book. I remember reading it as a teenager and feeling like I had a choice in what to think, not often a case for a high school student. I remember my teacher asking me, which story do you think was real? The one with the animals, I responded. I love that book because it wasn't tarnished by a movie. My imagination wasn't skewed. It would not have been my favorite book if I saw the movie first, yet it might have became my favorite movie. This is the first in a series about adaptations, the story of how a book becomes a movie. It's not about which is better, it's about how such a feat is even possible. In 1990, Yan Martel read a review by John Updike for a Portuguese book that has recently been translated into English. This book was called Max and the Cats by Moseo Guilherme. It was a negative review and Martel never read that book. Still, the premise stayed with him. A boy trapped on a boat with a man-eating jaguar. Reeling from the disappointing reception of his first two published books, Martel, in the midst of quitting a work in progress about Portugal, traveled to India for inspiration. This was 1996, five years before Life of Pi was published. It was during this trip that it all came together. By 2002, Yan Martel had become a household name. Winning one of the biggest prizes in literature will do that. In addition, Life of Pi spent 61 weeks on the New York Times bestsellers list. While Martel received criticism for not acknowledging Sinclair, eventually all that faded when he stated it could not be plagiarism of any form if he never read Sinclair's book. When put side by side, most critics failed to see many similarities between the two, structurally and thematically. In the same year, at the height of Life of Pi's popularity, 20th Century Fox Pictures executive Elizabeth Gabler was on maternity leave, where she saw the novel everywhere. All the other studios had passed on Life of Pi, so when producer Gil Netter called her and pitched the project, she recognized the complexity of the story. It takes place predominantly on the Pacific Ocean. It's highly spiritual, it's not a superhero sequel, and it's not easily summed up. These were all concerns. Still, Gabler saw a lot of potential in the story, so she made the deal for the film rights with Yann Martel a little over a year after the novel hit the shelves. When an author options their story to a production company, it is not always clear how much they will make. They may make a deal for as little as nothing with a promise of a percentage of the budget, if it ever gets funding. Or they may get an upfront payment for the film rights, all at once, perhaps $500,000. It's hard to predict how much exactly Martel made from optioning the rights for Life of Pi, but one may wonder if the lengthy duration it took to make the film and the trouble it will soon have with the budget worked for or against him monetarily. In February of 2003, Gabler had officially acquired the rights to Life of Pi and pre-production began. Screenwriter Dean George Garris, known for Manchurian Candidate, Tristan and Isolde, and Laura Croft Tomb Raider, The Cradle of Life, was hired to write the script. M. Night Shyamalan, yes, M. Night, was the first to partner with the project as the director in 2004. He had just finished with his movie The Village, and Life of Pi was tempting. After all, 
Shyamalan grew up in the very city the character Pai did, Pondicherry. However, he would back out of the project worried that the twist ending in Life of Pi would be affected if he was to direct it. People will be anticipating the twist the moment it began. That would hurt the story. And so, Shyamalan would sacrifice himself and begin work on his next movie, Lady in the Water. The project went in and out of limbo at this point. As of March of 2005, Alfonso Corian was rumored to have signed on to direct it, but stepped down to work on Children of Men. In October of the same year, Jean-Pierre Genet, director of Amelie, was hired by 20th Century Fox to take on the job. Genet jumped on the opportunity after backing out of Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix not long before, and began working on the screenplay with his partner from Amelie, Guillaume Laurent. Things were working great. Genet had a script that the studio liked, he built miniatures of the lifeboat, and he even started location scouting in India. Then a major problem materialized. The budget. The project would cost in excess of $85 million. According to Investopia, the average cost of a major studio movie in 2007 was $65 million. The mission was to get the budget to $60 million. However, that simply wasn't going to happen with Genet. In frustration, the heads of Fox told him to produce the movie himself. For two years, Genet had been working on Life of Pi. Suddenly, the movie was at a standstill as the producers sought new solutions. Then, time ran out for him. Genet did not want to spend the rest of his life working on Life of Pi. And four months later, he had a script for a new project, Micmax. Life of Pi was once again without a director. At this time, Life of Pi was getting a reputation as being an unfilmable movie. It was getting riskier and riskier for 20th Century Fox, with no marketable star and every money-sucking challenge imaginable for a filmmaker, the adaptation of Yann Martel's Man Booker Prize winner seemed impossible. In early 2009, almost eight years after the novel was published, the fourth director for the film was hired. Academy Award winner Ang Lee, best known for his diverse resume, including Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Brokeback Mountain, and Hulk. Screenwriter David McGee, known for Finding Neverland, was personally hired by Lee to write the screenplay, working closely together. Writers, if you ever feel like giving up on a project, remember everything Life of Pi went through. In three and a half years of working on the movie, McGee and Lee wrote 170 drafts of the script. Life of Pi was a story that is told primarily from the mind of the character. Pi, alone on the lifeboat, with a tiger. How can they translate it to the screen? Lee and McGee dove deep into the project, speaking with those who had survived at sea, visiting holy locations in India, and even setting out in a boat during harsh weathers themselves to gain the personal experience. Once again, it felt as though the movie was back on track, yet there was still the issue of a marketable lead. Finding a young Indian boy to play the role of Pai, a huge responsibility, was challenging and lengthy. It required a worldwide search with Lee auditioning 3,000 actors. In the end, he found Suraj Sharma and placed him in a setting as daunting as a lifeboat with a tiger, his first impossible Hollywood movie. Lacking a familiar name on the bill continued to be a concern for the studio at least for their North American audience. At a time, Tobey Maguire, the original Spider-Man himself, was cast as the author interviewing a much older Pai Patel. But Lee later felt that having a recognizable face would be more of a distraction than benefit. On top of that, there was another worry for the studio. Yes, the same concern that troubled them a few years ago, budget. In 2010, Jim Janopoulos and Tom Rothman, two chairmen of 20th Century Fox, called Elizabeth Gabler, letting her know that they were going to withdraw from the project, ending funding completely. Life of Pi the movie 
was on life support and was about to have his plug pulled. The proposed budget was simply too big of a risk for the studio. Gabler called Ang Lee to deliver the bad news. Fox is off the project, and Lee was free to shop the film to another studio, a mammoth project to say the least, which may stall the film for another decade. Gabler was as disappointed as Lee. There was nothing else like it. Yes, it wasn't the conventional movie with heartthrobs and superheroes, but that was what made it worth fighting for. To her surprise and admiration, Lee did not give up. Before the call ended, he told her he will make his way to LA to discuss the matter in person. With him, he had Suraj Sharma's audition tape and a pre-visualization scene of the shipwreck, the pivotal moment in the story that left the character Pai stranded at sea. In addition to those two selling points, Lee was willing to accommodate with the expenses. Gabler was impressed, and she brought it to Giannopoulos and Rothman. Together, they cut $25 million from the proposed budget. This was helped by filming many portions of the movie in Taiwan. In 2012, Life of Pi was released to rave reviews, earning the film 11 Academy Award nominations, including a nomination for screenwriter David McGee for Best Adapted Screenplay and producer Gil Netter for Best Picture, along with Ang Lee and David Womack. The film ended up winning four Oscars, including one for Ang Lee as Best Director. Not only was it well received by the critics to the delight of the studio, the movie turned out to be a commercial success, grossing over $500 million worldwide with a final budget of $120 million. Taking him nearly four years, Ang Lee claims it was the hardest movie he ever had to make. Not every adaptation will be deemed impossible or receive critical acclaim and be a commercial success, yet every adaptation will have their own unique story. Is there a movie based on a book that you're curious about? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos about the journeys of writers and creators. I'll see you in the next video.